Thank you so much and welcome, welcome, welcome to our esteemed panelists as well. I hope you all had, uh, had a good coffee break now as well, I would say, a virtual coffee break. Uh, I would like to ask our panelists as well, first question, very important question, how hungry are you all now after <laughs> looking at all the nice food as well? Uh, thank you so much, DigiLabs, for having us here and what a wonderful launch event that we have seen as well. A really good virtual tour as well. So my name is Akip. I'm the country manager for Sustainable Living Lab. And what I generally do is uh, I'm a consultant and I work with public, private and people sector to create digital skilling programs. Uh, so we work uh, currently my biggest project is working with governments on an AI upskilling initiatives. So we are launching AI programs all over the world. Uh, and also, of course, working with DigiLabs, we have some of the programs that you will see in artificial intelligence and cybersecurity as well. And for other programs like data science and digital marketing, we have some of the uh, partners over here from different companies over here as well. So to what I would suggest is, of course, we, this will be a very open-ended, very honest session as well. We would request the participants here to uh, ask any kind of questions, be it career-related, work-related, or passion-related in terms of what, what you want to do ahead as well. And we would try to answer most as we can. Uh, so I would pass on some, uh, so we can get started with some introductions. Uh, so maybe to I will pass some time to Miss Ernie. Over to you. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Julie from Cooper Asia. Good to see uh, all of you here today. So uh, at Cooper Asia, we build communities and software because we believe that uh, coding is the superpower that anyone can have. And regardless of your industry or the area of impact they are interested in, there is something that you know technology can do to help you uh, create positive change in the world. Um, I think as a highlight myself, I'm also very proud to hear of this whole story about how this iconic brand clean is going digital and international. And as more and more of these companies and uh, consumers go on, the importance for data science has never been um, you know, more important than ever before, right? With so much data going online. So really looking forward to seeing how we can uh, chat our digital journeys together to create positive change. Uh, back to you, Akit. Thank you so much, uh, so much, uh, Miss Ernie, as well. Uh, yeah, we'll discuss more on the digitalization efforts, uh, and hopefully, we can connect back as well in terms of what we can gain and we can learn, and especially the participants can understand from it as well going forward. Uh, I will try to pass my t uh, some time to Mr. Victor for an introduction. Hello everyone, uh, Victor here. So um, I founded the Social Enterprise Hatch. Um, we do digital skills training um, and digital projects. Um, I think none of these are really new stuff, um, but I think what um, Hatch really cares about is how can we make digital opportunities more accessible. That um, I think what, what, what got us started is realizing that, you know, opportunities to learn digital skills um, is not always that equal. And that's what that was what made us like um start the company. So um really happy to be here today. Um we are also the content partner for um the digital marketing program. And um we'd love to hear more from like the participants, like um what are your thoughts about this um digital skills and how you guys see yourselves being involved. Thank you so much, uh, Victor, as well for the introduction. Uh, I will pass the time to Mr. Christopher. Okay, hello everyone. Good morning. I'm Christopher. So I'm a business owner turned civil servant, now turned lecturer. So I'm in the academic field now. So quite a few exciting things I heard earlier today. E-commerce will continue to boom from Mr. Woon and uh, digital transformation is about changing life from our Minister of State, right, Mr. Tan. So look forward to sharing more and uh, very, very happy to take your question. Thank you so much, Mr. Chris Christopher. And last but not the least, uh, Ms. Preeti. Hi, everyone. Uh, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you're joining us from. Um, I work with SAP, um, an organization that truly believes um, you can have profit and purpose both together. Um, so my job is really attracting um, talent like yourself, the best talent that there is, 
uh, to work for an employer as fascinating as um, SAP. So um, I believe that in this whole digital transformation journey, um, COVID has um, fortunately or unfortunately played a very important part. I mean, right now we don't have a choice. Everybody is on that accelerated path to uh, digitalization. And, uh, you know, there is no choice. It's about equipping yourself with the right skills be it technical or non-technical. I don't like to use the word soft because I believe non-technical skills are also equally important in building that um, you know, digitally sustainable future. So I'm excited to hear from all of you questions um, regarding how can you equip yourself better? What are, what are companies really looking for? And I'm really hoping we can excite you to get on this journey and be part of, of, of an amazingly um, digitized and yet a sustainable tomorrow. Thank you so much. Yes, very, very important points over here as well that we have heard from different uh, panelists over here, right? So just to get things started off, right? So I think the, the main question would mostly majorly be after listening to Kilini's journey as well that we have seen, right? So so I think my question to, to, to the panelists over here in this digitalization efforts, what what is the biggest resistance that you have seen in your area of work whenever we are working around any any kind of industry and uh, if you can focus some light on that as well. Uh, Mr. Victor or Mr. Uh, you want to get us started? Um, yeah, I can go first. So um, I mentioned earlier that for Hatch, um, we do both digital skills um, training and digital projects. Um, in the aspect of a project, I think you can imagine us as like a digital agency um, working on areas like um, digital marketing and user interface, user experience design. Um, those are just terms in itself. Um, I think when it's translated to projects, what it looks like, it's um, helping companies plan out their digital marketing strategy, um, doing um, perhaps being on like a social media retainer for them to help to communicate to their audience. Um, I think one of the biggest resistance that I see working with businesses in that um, space is that um, often I think digital skills are not that easily understood. Um, there is this somehow mysterious aura that like digital can do everything and that um, you have to understand it completely. Um, I, I do think that that stops a lot of um, business owners from really like understanding how um, how actually that accelerates a lot of their business. It's not here to change it fundamentally. It's just here to help you. Um, to give an example, right? So um, we work with like a range of projects. If you go and see our website, um, you'll see like some of like the bigger organizations. So you can imagine that um, they have the resources to look at um, digitalization. At the same time, you see startups, right? Startups, um, they are new. Um, usually, um, founders they they are, they are using digital to give themselves an edge. Um, what we are not able to really unlock at this point it's um, a lot of the small and medium enterprises which um, oftentimes they have um, management or founders who um, might not understand digital as much so you know like i i um one of the food that we are very famous in singapore is durian and um actually like one of the durian store owners of like this like this very famous um chain actually came to us and said you know can you help to digitize our business um, and I think what we realized is that fun, like he, it's very difficult for them to understand what digitalization is. What he did was to send us a link to the website of his competitor. And then it's like, oh, can, can you do this and better? Yeah. So I think that's, that's um, where I see the resistance is in, which is um, truly understanding and seeing how it can be embedded into um, our everyday businesses and lives. Yeah, thank you so much, Mr. Victor. Yes, exactly. So very important in terms of people not understanding what digitalization actually means and and what what they can do with it going forward as well right so so any anyone else wants to comment on the digitalization Maybe efforts yeah, Christopher. also take that up just to bridge i think one form of resistance i do see is also the mental resistance right because when you have uh, so many technology going around the technology is evolving at a very very fast pace sometimes you know as an individual you are so bombarded by content bombarded by what is the direction what can i learn what can i do right uh, and that sort of set you back then you ask yourself are you ready right so the mental resistance sometimes is there and uh, especially for you know workforce who are very used to certain ways of doing what they are already doing very successfully 
right? I'll give you an example. So just now the Kalini copy shop, right? You can see that even through the whole process of digitization, you have to tackle many problems of helping staff to also understand the need, you know, take up the skills and find out what else they can do to make the business better. So mental resistance is one. But having said that, I also see a lot of a strong example from the sharing just now. When uh, you look at data and using data, data analytics, data science, you are able to help guide your decision. And that is something that can help businesses as well to evolve. So one of the other piece that I do see is that at least for Singapore, we have a basic digital skills training program to help our nation be digitally ready. And that blueprint guides our nation, the different community players, businesses, government to come together to help us move forward together as a smart nation. So I think these are some of the interesting points. Let's change the mental resistance. Let's look at the opportunity and then we can see what we can do together. Thank you so much. Uh, yes, mental resistance seems to be one of the biggest hurdles uh, we have seen as well when we are, of course, developing certain programs as well to really get them out of the mindset of, I can't do this, right? So I think on that point, uh, I want to talk to Miss uh, Ernie as well over here with the code for Asia as well, right? So coding especially, right, is regarded, oh, it's, it's not something I can do because I've never done it before. So how important would does that play a role or play a part in that particular resistance side of things? Yeah, so I think the point I wanted to add is to show that perhaps the third factor in resistance towards digitalization really has to do with a general anxiety, fear, and distrust that people have towards technology. Um, some of it is obviously due to some of the scandals that we have seen in recent years. And uh, for people who are non-digital natives or who lack the access to you know the relevant tools and resources, I think tech can be seen as rather um off-putting or it feels like this uh, black box that people are very scared of. So I think it's really important for us to create more inclusive and more uh, helpful environments in which people feel like they can advance together, right? So uh, I think having communities that are able to lift each other up to really make sure that we include vulnerable groups and actually make sure they leave no one behind are really important factors in making sure that everyone can share the fruits of digitalization together. And over time, as people see the positive change that are created um, when people, you know, learn new skills or when they're able to apply solutions meaningfully in the communities, then that's how slowly, in a way, the gospel will start to spread. And so uh, it's really important that we keep these things in mind. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, correct. So, so I think on on to that same point as well, right? So, uh, Miss Preeti as well. So, I know you spoke about technical skills and, of course, some soft skills as we call it as over here as well. The same importance of it. So, how how important that is in 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 HR side of things as well when you look at potential candidates uh, working in any particular industry uh, and your partners as well. So I think um, the trend is now be, is now shifting, right? Uh, so everybody believes in a, in a culture of lifelong learning. So it is hiring for aptitude rather, you know, attitude rather than aptitude. So we most HR professionals, and I'm sure I speak for the industry, the people believe that skills like technical skills you can coach, but there are certain um, non-technical skills that are very critical. And like I said, with COVID, this whole um, digital um, transformation or acceleration has been so rapid that it requires certain key skills, in my opinion, right? So one is, of course, being extremely flexible and adaptable because uh, we all know how life was, you know, uh, how they call be before COVID and after COVID. Things have changed dramatically, even with just Kilney, right? You've seen earlier it was just walking into a coffee shop and getting a cup of coffee. Now it's it's all about, you know, have I worn the mask? Do I have the right? So there are a lot of, lot of things that have changed. So people prefer to go to an online model where you're ordering things, you have things that, you know, retail, which is now on your phone, you have, uh, you know, even doctor appointments are now being done virtually. So that's the shift that the world is getting into. So what does it take to be successful in this sort of an online world, right? In my opinion, three things. One, being extremely agile and alert to the fact that uh, it's no longer just, you know, you've done, I'm, I've learned, I've had my degree and I'm done. It's a learn, it's cultivating that sort of culture of constant learning. It doesn't have to be full-fledged programs, but constantly looking for opportunities to learn and keep 
abreast of the latest technology trends. So that is something that's very, very critical. Two, COVID has ensured that the world is a much smaller place. Though we've not been traveling, um, hopefully with travel opening up, we will all pack our suitcases again. But with travel not uh, being something that's been present for the last two years, we've all learned to work from our laptops. We're working with countries across the world. You're speaking to colleagues, um, you know, uh, people across the world. And that gives you an opportunity to build more productive and collaborative, um, you know, a network just by your attitude. So that involves being accepting of other people's cultures, being having a strong online presence, the ability to build, um, you know, collaborative relationships for a successful outcome. So that is, again, very, very important. And three, the ability to see the bigger picture. Everybody wants to look at someone who takes ownership and responsibility and looks at the bigger picture rather than saying, hey, this is my small pie and this is what I'm going to do. How does my pie fit into the larger scheme of things? How can I contribute? How can I make a difference? Those are some things that you know uh, are very, very important to be successful in this sort of a hybrid world where we have you know a virtual setup and you know an on on um, you know in person setup. So, in my opinion, these are three very very strong skills that most companies sort of look to have, along with of course the technical expertise that we've all been speaking about. Yeah, uh, yeah, very very important to stay on this being agile and being alert on to on what's new technology coming up as well. And, and definitely can side with you on the last point as well in terms of people having the skill sets or mindsets in terms of thinking, what is the bigger picture? Why are we doing this? Rather than being very specific in terms of your trade and your roles and your tasks as well. So we, we kind of lack that. And I feel we we need to prepare uh, for the future already as well. So I think on, on that point as well, I think the desire to learn aspect comes into play here as well a lot, right? So we go to our universities because that's the general pathway. But then now looking at the new world as well that we see that that's not the only skill set that you require. Being an engineer is not the end of it. After becoming an engineer, you need to start learning, collaborating, communicating with, uh, showing your slides in such a way that a non-English speaker can understand as well because they are decision makers around the world right now. Previously. We were not exposed to that because we would only reach out or find people who could speak English or have a common language, at least at that end. So, so I think on that desire to learn and learning never stops aspects of it, right? So, so Mr. Victor, any, you want to shed some light on that aspect in terms of what, what do you see around you? Um, I think like when, when it comes to, um, digital education, one of the things that I'm seeing um, which I think might be useful to some of the people here who are deciding whether to sign up. Um, a lot of people ask me like, you know, what's like the, what's the important digital skill to learn? Because there, there's so many options, right? Um, even in DigiLabs, there is four options and today there is two. Um, <clears throat> and I mean, um, the disclosure is that Hatch is the digital content, uh, DigiLabs content partner for digital marketing. But I actually would say that, um, the distinctions between um, the different digital skills um, are not as big as it might seem. They are not um, they are not different in like say like fundamental like topics as we um, probably imagine in like different like you know subjects, right? Um, and for example, like um, in digital marketing, um, a lot of it um, in the marketing analytics part has to deal with data. And fundamentally, when I look at you know applying this across different types of digital skills. What I see is that um, underpinning like all of this, um, there is the aspect of um, computational thinking. There is an aspect of understanding where technology can and cannot bring you to. And um, also there is the aspect of like ethics and responsible use of tech. And um, I think in that, in, that, in that note, what I'm seeing is that um, it's important to understand like what is it that you want to use um, the digital skill for? Um, are you looking at more like say communicating with an audience? Then perhaps your angle is to look at it from a digital marketing point of view. Are you looking at it in terms of generating insights? Maybe that could be like a data point of view. Um, but they're all very, very related. And I think that's the point that um, I hope to make here. Yes, yes, very, very important here, right? So I think uh, what, what we are going towards is all skills can be learned as Ms. Preeti mentioned as well, right? So it's more about the skills that we cannot learn is something that you can bring in yourself and you learn it on the playground as, as I love to call it. The playground is the best university out there. So I, I want to get to Mr. Christopher and ask him like, so I think we are coming to a point where we are talking about learning how to learn. 
skill is actually more important than actually what you want to learn, right? So I think, uh, yeah, yeah, Mr. Chris. So let me share some thoughts on that. I, I think what Mr. Victor has shared is uh, very interesting because, you know, all the different pieces sort of work very well together. But even if you can master just one, you are able to apply. I give you an example, right? So just now using the Kalini example again, if you are looking at overseas expansion, what do you look for? You need data. You need data to see whether perhaps a particular package product, the flavor of that package product works really well in a certain country. And with that data, you can start to think a little bit more aggressively. How do I then market more digitally to reach an even bigger consumer size in that market? Then you ask yourself, can I use artificial intelligence to make this process smarter, quicker, more seamless? And of course, to protect the entire spectrum of what you do, you have to then look at cybersecurity to keep your processes safe, to keep your consumer safe, right? So, I mean, with all this in mind, the question is not so much of what to learn, but are you ready to learn? Do you want to take this new step forward to sign up, to try to get the skill set, and then after that, explore the very wide repertoire of where you can apply? I mean, again, I will just end off on one point before I pass it on to the rest of the panelists to share more, right? You need the skills to be able to try out new ideas, right? And after that, with that new idea, you can reach a newer cloud, like what Mr. Woon has shared from Kalini. And by reaching a newer cloud, end of the day, you can new and you can build newest success for yourself and for the company you work with. I think that is what is critical for the economy and digital age of today. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, nicely put over here, right? So I think, uh, so uh, I mean, I just want to like catch up on to another point over here that that uh, the youth or young adults are really interested in as well, right? So we tend to do things that are very popular now, right? Uh, but again, you don't graduate today, right? You need one year, two years time, or six months time frame, four months time frame in terms of looking beyond, right? So so it comes to a point where we need to think for the future and learn the skills that are required for the future right so when we talk about future forecasting and finding those niche digital skills gaps as well so one you are more employable and two you have the skill sets to solve some more problems that nobody else can because you have the required skill sets as well right so, so i think one of the questions also revolves around the same thing so whatever i'm learning today digital marketing today for example or data science of today or ai of today how valid would it be six months down or two years down down the line as well. So maybe uh, I can pass the time some uh, to Miss Ernie to, for some comments on this. Yeah, so I think uh, in a way to a, certain, to a certain extent, the skills that we learn today could be a bit uh, backward looking and it's always hard to predict um, what sort of skills could be relevant in the future. Or perhaps one way to think about it is simply to look at what the use of today and what are some of the emerging groups of today are, are working on? Uh, what, what sort of um, habits or what sort of uh, new changes they would like to see? Because in, to a certain extent, those are the trends that will um, go forward into the future that we can try to um, build for. So to a large extent, I actually think that um, use are in a huge uh, advantage because when you are trying to build the future, Effectively, you just need to look to what your peers are doing, right? And then maybe for those of us who are also young, a lot of this also comes down to actually just listening and um, learning together with other people from, from different generations. And I think it's really where um, some of these timeless skills that the other panelists talk about, whether it's in having a agile mindset, whether it's in being able to constantly uh, learn new things or adapt, would be really useful because I think with tech, especially, there are always like new technologies, new frameworks. Um, uh, like even during this whole pandemic, there's been a whole huge uh, surge in interest in blockchain and F NFT technologies. And there's all this talk about the metaverse as well. So you never know what's going to come next, but if you are always curious and you are always trying to, I think, learn something new, um, that would those skills themselves will actually help to propel you into um, building the sort of future that you would like to realize. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so I think this is very uh, again even more important. Yes, Mr. Victor. 
Yeah, yeah I'd like just like to quickly jump in here um, because I think this is something that um, that is close to heart in terms of like, you know, how do you remain relevant when things are changing so fast? Um, of course, like there is the part about, you know, you can try to forecast, right, based on the information that we have now, what's the next big thing in five years? Um, I, I do think that like, you know, from, from my experience, um, I, I feel that um, as long as you don't stop trying to solve problems for other people, um, you won't become redundant. And I'm looking at it in terms of like, so Hedge, one of the programs that we run is um, digital marketing. Um, and actually a lot of the professionals that we, and practitioners that we work with, um, they are in their 50s, um, 60s. And um, when I think about it, like a lot of them have marketing background. And what that means is that they spent a good 10, 20 years of their careers looking at how to optimize for ads in a newspaper classifieds. Right. How do you put your company onto the yellow pages? And when I work with them right now, what I'm seeing is not that, you know, they are redundant. Um, what I'm seeing is that actually um, these people, they are able to pick up the digital marketing skills um, at a point right now that, you know, they are like our trainers, they are the practitioners, um, they are the people that work with the clients um, because they never stopped addressing the client's um, challenges. The client's challenge is not to put, um, uh, not to put their company on the classifieds ad. The client's challenge is I want my brand out there and I want to be able to solve my, um, I want to be able to sell my products or services. So I, I do think that that's an important distinction. Um, whichever digital skills that you pick up, as long as you're continually trying to apply, right? Um, the, the reverse is, you know, um, I have this skill, um, I'm going to do this um, work forever. I think that that's the mindset that um, possibly would cause you to be redundant. But as long as you continue trying to solve problems, then I think um, you're always going to be the the one who is looking and pushing ahead in whichever field you're in. Uh, I have seen that as well, uh, right? So for example, when we are developing AI programs, AI is such a fast changing field. So one, two weeks down the line, all the things, the no code tools, new tools come up all, all day long. But I think it brings us back to the same point of like, what is the problem we are trying to solve here? So more about love the problem rather than trying to find solutions for it or trying to force with the solutions on it. Uh, I would love to listen to Mr. Christopher as well over here. Yes, I just want to add one dimension to the discussion because I, you know, in my work at Republic Poly, I also mentor startups, I mentor businesses and also students project as well. So one thing I do see when business owner looks to hire and I echo this, right, with uh, Miss Pretty who has already shared on some of this. We, I mean, business owner don't hire just purely based on your aptitude and abilities. They look at your attitude, right? Do you have the mindset to learn? A lot of times, what you have studied, what you have gained in terms of your existing, existing skills helps you to have a good foundation. But it's really in the real business scenario that you start to apply. And that is an ongoing process. That is on-job training required. That's something that you're gaining insights every day from your exposure to work challenges, project challenges. And all of us mature and get better from this process. So I, I think one of the things that Ernie, Miss Ernie has shared is that, you know, you need to always continue to look at what is out there in the market. There are trends there today. Metaverse is one of them. And really by taking that first step to start to learn, to practice, I think we can all build the future of tomorrow by just starting today. So again, on that note, I'll pass it back to Akwit. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, exactly. So, so I think in our conventional way of uh, getting to a career was, okay, we learn something, then we go to work and that's about it. And then we keep doing that work now. But now we have seen, okay, there is a learn. Yes, that is important still to give you structure. Then you go to work, do your jobs. But then now within the work, there is so many new things happening. You need to go back and learn new things come back, apply them and learn. So we get to a learn, work, learn, work model as well, right? Uh, so I think that that uh, this is where I can like rope in Miss Preeti as well over here a bit more. So so people are scared of, of course, or assume that, okay, I've learned enough. Okay, now I'm just going to work, right? So how do you balance in, in a company environment at least, right? That, you know, you are learning as you're working as well, because as we understand when you're working, you don't have time to do learning part of it. How do you make sure that that gel or that balance happens? 
Yeah, and I think that's where the shift has happened away from traditional learning, right? At, at least speaking for most of us, I think um, when when you said Akib, uh, when you said learning, all of us believed going to a university or getting that degree was what learning was all about. Um, but like Mr. Christopher pointed out as well, there's so much you can learn on a job. So that is where companies are now looking at offering, um, you know, sort of learning opportunities across the candidate or the employee experience, right? So you have somebody join the company and they have uh, various experience points. So they come in, they have the onboarding. That's a learning in its then you get onboarded into the team you understand how the team functions what's the problem that you're trying to solve and then a couple of years later you're looking at okay I, i'm done with this i need to move on so companies are now looking at various opportunities along the employee experience or the life cycle as we call it to offer a learning experience now i think the key for all of us to understand is like Akib, you pointed out, we don't have the time, especially if you're learning, working professionals, the opportunity to learn is going to be very, very limited. So I see a lot of companies moving towards a more bite-sized learning approach, so learning on the move. So it's not just uh, books and PDFs that you're learning from, but you're learning from podcasts, you're learning from um, you know, vis so short videos, you're learning from other visuals. So just making that opportunity to learn easily available and on your fingertips. Now with all of us in Singapore, and I'm sure other parts of Asia as well, travel is a big part of our life you know when assuming life gets back to normal i'm hoping so soon um going back to office or going to your university or wherever you're off you do have a significant lead time in travel using that time to learn using that time to do podcasts that's a way of staying relevant absolutely and if you look at most of the certificate courses offered as well um you know you could look at the ones the more popular ones coursera udemy etc all of them have a bite-sized approach to uh, learning. So utilizing these kind of models would be a great way to stay you know, up, um, uh, ahead of the curve. Another way, like Mr. Christopher pointed out, is looking constantly for what are those learning opportunities around you, right? So uh, it's not that you've got a degree and you're in a team and that's where you stay for life. I think we've all shifted away from that model. Constantly looking around you to say, how can I cross, you know, learn from across teams, right? How do I, I have a role that allows me to interact across teams or allows me to take on global projects a lot of companies are now looking at these kind of opportunities doing a short term what we call a job shadowing where you're allowed to follow or, or shadow literally shadow a colleague from another region or uh, you know a colleague in a different profile that allows you to understand what is in it um, you know and what is it that they do which could further charter your path so looking at unconventional forms like you know doing internships doing a short fellowship as we call it in sap which means you take time off from your uh, regular work and go spend two weeks in a different team trying to understand what they do and broaden your horizon so the opportunities are limitless it's just about finding that right mix and companies are today recognizing the need to offer uh, unconventional and non-traditional forms of learning so it's all there it's right about you know seizing the opportunity i would say Akib. Exactly, right? So learning on the go is becoming very, very common, right? So, and I, I think, as again, going back traditionally, we, we wanted to learn as much about the problem first and then jump on it and solving it. Right now, we want to learn enough about the problem, jump in and then start figuring out because the problem itself is so complicated. It evolves along the way as well with, with the passing minute right now with, with the data that we have as well. So I think uh, just wanted to bring some conversation back to Miss Ernie as well over here. So. There is, there is still a mental resistance, right? So, okay, I don't know much about, for example, data, and then is my data going to be protected and all as well, right? So with the new technologies coming in, it we see it as a black box and we get scared. So how what, what are the, how do you take, like get over that particular resistance part of it as well? How do you embrace it? Miss hmm. Ernie? Yeah. Um, I think the <laughs> first step really just begins with like, um, trying things out as some of the panelists have shared before, right? Because I think the fun thing, the cool thing about technology is also that um, your computer is not going to explode, right? So as you try out new models, as you um, enter the code or whatever, you can actually see the results of what you are creating. And that, that feedback is a really powerful tool that um, you may not be able to get as applicable as in other learning scenarios. So I think learning about digital skills is really something that's especially um, interesting and relevant for our times in terms of like, I think it's one dimension in which you can actually look at learning as something that can be done not only within an academic setting, but also is something that you can do with your peers or with industry practitioners, like what you could potentially do on this DigiLabs program. And what you uh, create here by the fact that it's digital and online, Instantly, it's able to reach out to an entire global audience 
So the impact of your learning and the impact of the things that you are making can be very real and immediate. And I think hopefully if people focus on the excitement, the sort of like vision that you can realize with technology, um, you know, I think it's, courage is really about um, overcoming your fears to, to pursue something bigger, right? So hopefully that excitement and that curiosity will help to pull people through and on a program like DigiLabs, you know, you get to do it, do it with a supportive community. So even if you feel, or even if um, yeah, I'm not able to um, catch up uh, as quickly, it's okay because there are other people who are going through the same struggle as you. Yeah, uh, back to you, Akip. Thank you so much. Yes, so I think we, uh, for time as well, right? So what we we can, I mean, it's a lovely conversation as well that, that I've had as well, right? So I think just to end it off on a top notch as well over here as well. And I hope we can keep doing this more and more. It's a, it's a, it's a problem we all want to solve together as well. And we are part of it very passionately as well. So, so from each of the panelists over here, I would request you to try to summarize and keep your passion limited control for a one sentence if possible. Uh, in terms of what advice do you want to give to the participants as well, whether it's about the new trends, about embracing embracing new ideas, working in a highly resistant colleagues or an environment as well. It could, uh, so I would uh, start from Mr. Christopher as well over here. So one sentence as an advice Just to right. the participants. Right. So let's all work together because it's a collaborative world now. Technology has taken away the boundaries. We can all work together and always remember to do good. And that's where the DigiLab programs come in very strongly to support you with all the exposure to panelists, mentors, content. And I hope that you'll do well and I wish you all the success. Thank you so much, uh, Miss Preeti. I would just say be authentic, grab any opportunity that comes your way and make the best of this opportunity. It's not often that you get to meet people from different um, you know, uh, countries and be part of such a fabulous program. So absolutely grab the opportunity, be yourself and, and work for a better sustainable future. Thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Victor? Um, I, I mentioned at the very beginning when introducing Hatch that um, digital accessibility um, is our work and um, accessibility is just as important, if not more important, um, in what we do. And um, I, I hope that for the participants that are looking at it, um, if at any point you're wondering, like, am I really ready and able to pick up these digital skills? Um, I hope that you wouldn't doubt yourself. Um, maybe like if we look at like the participants at Hatch, um, I've had learners with age from between um, youngest is 16 up to 64. Um, and I've seen them together like in the same course before. And um, it's really wonderful. And it really doesn't matter whether you come from like a tech or non-tech background. Um, it, didn't ma it doesn't really matter like which stage of life you're in. Um, the social part of the social enterprise in Hatch is that we work with um, youth from out of school and at risk backgrounds as well. And you might, you, you probably won't even realize it, but some of the Hatch graduates um, who are now working in very, very promising agencies and companies actually came from that background. So for those of you guys who are looking at this, um, it is really, there is a lot of opportunity for um, uh, inclusivity and diversity in um, this digital space. Thank you. Uh, over to you, Ms. Ernie. Let's keep this short and sweet since we are already uh, out of time. Uh, so if you are curious about the correlation between bubble tea and tea amongst uh, bubble tea and coffee, I mean, amongst other data problems, you can take your first step with DigiLabs uh, data science program. And I hope to see you there. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yes, the project oriented approach solutions, creating a social impact project approach of DigiLabs uh, programs itself. I think that really allows you to Get, dip your toes in to really know what, what is out there and how you can utilize it for the maximum need, right? So with all that, thank you so much for all of your time over here as well on a Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon now, and, and Kilini making us hungry as well. So we hope we can get together on a Kilini stop somewhere, right? So uh, now with things opening up, at least in Singapore side of things. Uh, so thank you so much again. Uh, and thank you so much, DigiLabs, for giving us the opportunity to, to, to share our thoughts, our opinions as well, and to work with you as partners and collaborative partners going forward as well. So I'll pass the time back to our nice MC over there. Back to you. <laughs>